Acts chapter number 2, and it's good to be here. Again, it's good to see all y'all. It's also uh, nice to have my parents here with me tonight. I appreciate them being here. Uh, we all go to the same church. We had homecoming today, as Brother Brandon mentioned. Believe it or not, that is my mother. She is old enough to be my mother. She doesn't look old enough to be my mother. Now, my dad, he looks old enough to be my father, amen? He definitely looks his age, but... Um, Really, really good to have them here, and I, I appreciate them. And of course, I appreciate also uh, my wife and son being with me. This is the first time for a lot of you. A lot of you know me pretty well now. Uh, you get to meet Coburn, so good to have him in the service. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter number 2, and I'm going to read verse number 1 through 7. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. And, and when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together, and they were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed, and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for all your many blessings. Thank you, dear Lord, for using us even though we fail you every day. Thank you, dear Lord, for the forgiveness of sins. I pray, God, you'll just be with us tonight. Touch us. Fill me, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. Give me the words to say. Help those that are listening, Lord, to understand, dear God, that you'll touch them and give them a blessing through your message. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We look here in Acts chapter number 2, and I want to give you three things by way of introduction. Number one, there was an expectation in Acts chapter 2, verse number 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Number one, there was an expectation from the disciples. If you look at Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8, it says, But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, that was their hometown, and all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So, the Holy Spirit here is not an influence. Not like, the Holy Spirit is also not like man's spirit. Okay? But the Holy Spirit of God is a person in the Godhead. Amen. The Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is not an it. He's a person. The Bible always speaks of Him as a person. And in the Bible here, Jesus promised them, He said, Ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. There was an expectation Pentecost was 50 days after Christ's death. And Pentecost, I'm going to get on this a little bit later, and I'm, you're going to hear me say this several times. Pentecost was a one-time event. We're not looking for another Pentecost. There's no need for another Pentecost. It's only one time. We see there was an expectation. Number two, there was empowerment. Verse number two, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Jesus prophesied that the Holy Spirit would empower the churches for worldwide evangelism. There was empowerment. Just like God filled the tabernacle with Moses, just like God filled the temple with Solomon, God's filling the presence, His presence with the church as His new place of presence and as His place of worship. He was filling the church. There's an empowerment. And then by way of introduction, there was evangelizing. Look at verse 3 and 4. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. There was evangelizing. There's different evidences in the book of Acts, there was different evidences of men being filled with the Holy Spirit of God. 
There were times where the Bible says that they were bold witnesses of Jesus Christ. That was the evidence of them being filled. There was good reputation. There was heavenly mindfulness. The Bible says that, that they stood against false teaching. That was an evidence of them being filled with the Holy Spirit of God. And this is the only time in the book of Acts where tongue speaking is connected with spirit filling. It's the only time in the book of Acts. There was only one Pentecost, as I said before. There's never going to be another Pentecost. But it's here in the book of Acts, the Christians were seeking the Holy Spirit. They gathered in that upper room and they were not a church. But as soon as God filled the room, they were a church. And as a church today, we don't seek after the Holy Spirit of God. We are to yield to the Holy Spirit of God. There's a difference there. And I'll get into that a little later. But I want to preach on the topic tonight, what we can learn from Pentecost. What we can learn from Pentecost. I want to look here. This is not a meaty message. This is not a real in-depth in study of Pentecost. This is a real milky message. This is a message of application of how we can look at the disciples on the day of Pentecost and what we can take from that. And how we as a church can grow from that. And there's really only one church. We all know at the moment of salvation, a person is indwelt with the Holy Spirit of God. And that's the church. A lot of people today, we talk about the end times, we talk about the Antichrist, it's impossible for the Antichrist to come right now. You want to know why? It's because when a person is saved, they are indwelt with the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit of God is still here. The church is still here. It's impossible for the Antichrist to come. That's impossible. The church is still here. God's still saving souls. God's still convicting sinners. God's still calling men to preach. The church is still at work. And we look here in the book of Acts, we see the very time, the very moment, when the church is filled with the Holy Spirit of God. What can we learn from Pentecost? Number one, they had fellowship. Number one, we can learn from their fellowship. Look at verse number one. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. What can we learn from Pentecost? Number one, we can learn from their fellowship. Lauren will give someone a dollar if y'all get me somebody gets me some water. My wife will give you a dollar. I don't know if it's today or later on, maybe five dollars, I don't know. But if somebody could just get me a cup of water, uh, preferably just um, you know, something I could just drink real quick. But we see we can learn from their fellowship. Number one, we see the position of God. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Church, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. We need that in our day. We have enough programs in our churches. We have enough things going on in our churches. Nothing wrong with that. But what we truly need is we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. We need Christians who are saved and have repented of their sins, and are indwelled with the Holy Spirit of God, to be sensitive of the Holy Spirit of God, and to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God, and to listen to the Holy Spirit of God, and yield themselves to Him, and let Him tell them what to say, and where to go, and, and how the Lord can be given to a lost and dying world through us. We need what they had here. These men were and women, they were all in fellowship. The Bible says they came in one place, in one accord. They weren't arguing over the color of the carpet. They weren't arguing because somebody looked at them dirty in the parking lot 20 years ago. But they were in one accord. They were in fellowship. Not only were they in fellowship with each other, but first of all, they are in fellowship with God. Thank you, brother. I'll tell my wife she owes you a dollar. All right. <laughs> we can learn from their fellowship. In order for us to be in fellowship with each other, we have to be in fellowship with the Lord first, don't we? Amen. There's nothing more miserable 
than a Christian who's out of fellowship with God. Amen. That's right. You can't be in fellowship with your fellow believers in Christ. You, it's impossible. You can't be a witness to a lost and dying world. All you are, all we will become when we're out of fellowship with God is a stumbling block to fellow believers. And we'll become a bad testimony to a lost and dying world. That's right. And we'll give people who are trying to live for God and trying to, to preach the, the Word of God and live the Word of God to a lost and dying world, we'll give them a bad name. Fellowship with God. The Bible says, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. God told them something was going to happen. He promised them something. And until that day, they remained faithful. They were looking to Pentecost. That was the next day on God's calendar. The next event on God's calendar in our day is the rapture of the church. And like these, these men in Pentecost were being faithful until the day when they received the power of the Holy Spirit, we already have the Holy Spirit, amen. The church already has that. We need to be faithful to the Lord until His return. There was fellowship. We see two things about fellowship. We see the position of God. The Bible says they were all in one accord. Being where God is. We have an idea of where we want to be. But are we where God wants us to be? Best illustration I can ever think of being where God is, is Philip. Philip's in Samaria. He's preaching this great revival. People are getting saved. There's people all over the place. According to the flesh, that's a successful revival, right? We, that's what we look at. We look at the number. Who's around? But then God tells Philip, go to the desert. And Philip goes to the desert, and there's this Ethiopian eunuch sitting there, and the Bible says Philip ran to that man. He was in the place of God. Sure, there was a great revival going on in Samaria, but God called Philip to the desert where nobody was, where he could not be glorified by any man. But he went to this one lone eunuch and he preached unto him <clears throat> Jesus. He preached the Gospel. We see, we can learn from their fellowship. There's a position of God. Being where God is. <clears throat> Number two, we see the place of God. Look here in verse number 1, it says, <coughs> they were all with one accord in one place. I said earlier, just like God filled the tabernacle in Moses' day, just like He filled the temple in Solomon's day, He's now filled the church. This is God's place of worship. This is where we're supposed to worship the Lord. This is where we're supposed to <coughs> exalt the Lord. We see we can learn from their fellowship. Matthew chapter number 18 and verse number 20 says, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Presence and worship. There's the place of God. There's the position of God. <clears throat> we see we can learn from their fellowship. I need to quit smoking, I guess. I don't know what's going on up here. My wife smokes more than I do, but I need to quit. Amen? We see we, we can learn from their fellowship. I normally get my cigarettes from Miss Ann up here. Maybe she'll stop giving them to me. We can learn from their fellowship. Number two, we can learn from how they were filled. We can learn from how they were filled. Look if you would in verse number two and three. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. We can learn from their fellowship. Number two, we can learn from how they were filled. How God came to where they were and filled that room. There was a presence of God. He revealed Himself in two ways. Verse two, there was a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And then in verse 3, cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. It was tongues like fire, it's parting, it was sitting upon each of them. God had revealed Himself. We can learn from Pentecost how they were filled. There was the presence of God. 
that's where God was. It was His presence. Brother Brandon preached uh, <coughs> not too long ago, he preached a message about how prayer is effective and how the church is not lacking. We're not lacking preachers. We're not lacking programs. What we need is we need prayer. We need the presence of God. The Bible says over in Isaiah 64, verse 1, Oh, that thou would, wouldest rend the heavens, and that thou wouldest come down, that the mountains might flow down at thy presence. We need the presence of God in our churches again. We need the fear of God to come back in our churches, and conviction to set back in our churches, because the Holy Spirit, the presence of God is so strong. People are getting saved and Christian people are getting their heart right with God and in fear, in one accord, they're listening to the man of God preach. Thank God for Sunday school teachers. Thank God for teachers. But thank God for preachers. Amen? God calls men to stand up. God called men to stand up and preach the Word of God with authority. We see here, we can learn from how they were filled. There's the presence of God. God's presence came down on the day of Pentecost. Peter, the man that we often pick on in the Bible and that we often single out and how he chopped that man's ear off and how he denied Christ three times. Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Got up and preached and over 3,000 people came and got saved. The presence of God. Not only was there the presence of God, but there was the power of God. I believe with all my heart, Men and women cannot be saved apart from the Holy Spirit of God touching people and drawing people through His Word. Amen. The Holy Spirit of God, His presence, His power. What can we learn from Pentecost? Well, number one, we can learn from their fellowship. They were in one accord. We can learn from how they were filled. It wasn't them, it was God. It was God's presence, it was God's power. And then last of all, what can we learn from Pentecost? We can learn from how they followed God. Not only were they in fellowship with God and with one another, and they were at their place of worship in one accord, not only were, were they filled with the Holy Spirit of God, but also they followed. Boy, if we could just get to church and not quench the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. When the Holy Spirit of God works in our hearts and tells us to do something, we need to do that. We need to not grieve Him. But then, we need to be obedient and not get up and do something we're not supposed to do and not quench the Holy Spirit of God. But glorify Him and honor Him and trust and put faith in God the Father and pray to Him and ask Him to fill us with His Spirit that we may see the lost and dying world come to Christ. That's what these people did here. They followed. Look at verse number 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Not some of them. Not half of them. And their pastor was filled with the Holy Ghost. No, that's not how that works. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Churches today, listen, this church, guys, listen. Thank God for a good pastor. Y'all have a good man of God here. I'd recommend him to anybody. He's my brother and I love him. But listen, he shouldn't be the only one filled with the Holy Spirit of God on Sunday morning. He shouldn't be the only one Monday morning praying and reading his Bible and having a burden for this lost and dying world and having a burden to disciple young believers and have a burden for God's church to be in one accord and fellowship. All of us should be doing that. Amen? We should all come to God's house to worship. Don't just put it on your pastor. The Bible says here, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Those people at your job, God didn't place those, those people in Brother Brandon's path. He placed them in your path. Amen. He placed them for you to witness to, for you to invite to church. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. We see the peace of God. When we're in God's will, there's, nothing, there's no other peace that beats being in God's will. Amen. What greater peace than they had when they were filled with the Holy Ghost and went out on the day of Pentecost and began preaching and began telling people about Christ. We see here, we can learn from how they followed. The peace of God and last of all, the person of God. 
It says here, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The person of the Holy Spirit Spirit guided them. And us as Christians, we don't seek the Holy Spirit. No, sir, we don't seek the Holy Spirit the way that we may be filled. No, we yield to the Holy Spirit. That's what Paul preached. That's what Paul wrote in his epistles as he's writing to the church. We, we are to yield to the Holy Spirit of God. That we don't grieve Him. That we don't quench Him. So, like these good men did, we can follow Him. And He can guide us. And the fruits of the Spirit can be seen. And we can be blameless and conform to the image of Christ and glorify Him and do His work. What can we learn from Pentecost? Number one, we can learn from their fellowship. You see the position of God, the place of God. Number two, we can learn from how they were filled. You see the presence of God, the power of God. And last of all, we can learn from how they followed. We see the peace of God and the person of God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, thank You for this day. Thank you, Lord, for all your many blessings. Thank you, dear Lord, for Brother Brandon and Angie and their family, dear Lord. And uh, thank you, Lord, for their church. And I pray, God, that you'll be with us. Thank you, dear Lord, for touching those. And thank you, Lord, for the day of Pentecost. And we pray, Lord, that we can look at that and realize that there are things to learn, Lord. And that even today, dear God, we realize that you're still God. You're still in charge. You're still saving sinners. You're still convicting sinners and still calling men to preach. And you're still on the throne, dear Lord, that we'll learn from. Uh, people in Your Word, that Lord, that we'll just follow after You and be filled with Your Holy Spirit, dear God, and be, fe- be in fellowship with You, dear Lord, and be in fellowship with one another. We thank You, Lord, for all, all that You've done and all You're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray.